Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. It's nice to see some new faces here. It's always encouraging to see new faces um, at any evangelical church, because it's hard going at the moment, isn't it? Um, we've got three new faces, very young faces at Orton Park. So our pastor, who retires in April, he's had a grandson. There's a lovely family coming from uh, Crosby, and they've got a little baby boy. Uh, he's a professed believer, but he's not been for church for a long, long time, but he said he will come again. So we do hope we'll have three new faces, mum, dad and baby. And there's a young couple in the church and they've had a baby. So we've got Miriam, we've got Ezra, and we've got James. So uh, we might have a Sunday school again one day, you never know. There's um, our old Sunday school superintendent, Joe Smith. He's have been having a big clear out at his home. And he passed on a great big bag of pictures to my wife. We had a great time because back in the day, we had 70 odd children in our Sunday school. We had a separate Sunday afternoon for Sunday school. Uh, but those days have gone. As I say, it's very, very hard going. And when you see as our brother's been praying, what a horrible world some children are growing up in. And how confusing it must be. We need to have a firm biblical base and a firm foundation for them to grow up in. So let's turn to the Bible. We have three readings. So please turn to Hebrews chapter 11. And then we're going to have a reading from Judges chapter 6. And later on, we're going to refer to Luke chapter 14. So Hebrews 11 and the first three verses. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Now turn to Judges chapter 6, and we're going to uh, consider one of the important lessons from the life of a biblical hero, and his name was Gideon. Judges 6, verse 24 to 32. So Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and called it, the Lord is peace. To this day, it's still in Ophrah of the Abyssalites. Now it came to pass the same night that the Lord said to him, take your father's young bull, the second bull of seven years old, and tear down the altar of Baal that your father has, and cut down the wooden image that's beside it. And build an altar to the Lord your God on top of this rock in the proper arrangement. And take the second bull and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the image which you shall cut down. So Gideon took ten men from among his servants, and did as the Lord had said to him. But because he feared his father's household, and the men of the city too much to do it by day, he did it by night. And when the men of the city arose early in the morning, there was the altar of Baal torn down, and the wooden image that was cut was beside it was cut down, and the second bull was being offered on the altar which had been built. So they said one to another, Who's done this thing? And when they had inquired and asked, they said, Gideon, the son of Joash, has done this thing. Then the men of the city said to Joash, Bring out your son, that he may die, because he's torn down the altar of Baal, and because he's cut down the wooden image that was beside it. But Joash said to all who stood against him, Would you plead for Baal? Would you save him? Let the one who would plead for him be put to death by morning. If he is a god, let him plead for himself, because his altar has been torn down. Therefore, on that day, he called him Zerubbabel, saying, let Baal, sorry, let Baal plead against him because he has torn down his altar. And please turn for reference for future reading to Luke chapter 14. After we've had those two readings, we're going to refer to something I read last night and the Lord Jesus said from Luke chapter 14, verse 25, all about families. So heroes and anti-heroes. Perhaps you have your heroes like I've got my heroes, and my heroes might be very strange compared to your heroes, people we look up to. 
We might have our sporting heroes, like the man who won the uh, bowling tournament last night, and he's got a box of heroes to prove it. We might have a certain team we follow and certain players. I work with a little handicapped girl, and the man who sits with me to look after her day by day as we go from Ormskirk to Skelmersdale, he's a former professional footballer with Burnley Football Club. And all his heroes are from Everton Football Club, like mine are. You might like films and have your heroes in the films, be they a Disney hero or a Bond hero or whatever. You might have a hero in your own family, someone you look up to because of their Christian faith perhaps, or because of something they've done or something they represent. And then we've got our anti-heroes, and the first person that came to mind was uh, from a film called The Loneliness of a Long Distance Runner. If you've never heard of it, look it up, it's a brilliant film. Then we've got films like Room at the Top, all on talking pictures again and again and again. Then you might think of uh, Tom Brown's School Days and Flashman, the anti-hero. And then you might think of your favourite Bond baddie. Well, the Bible's full of heroes and the Bible's full of anti-heroes. Because the Bible is the word of God. And the word of God is true all the way from Genesis to Revelation. And in the past 6,000 years, as mankind has progressed, he's always and only been dogged by sin. Some people have risen above it. Some people have been brought down by it. And the book of Hebrews wants to remind us that in God's sight, there are heroes of the faith. And perhaps you can say that today without any hint of pride. Yes, I'm a hero of the faith. By God's grace, and our brother was praying about it before, I have persevered in the race that's run before me. Now that's so important when people go through the waters of the baptism. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon. This may be the beginning, you might have been a Christian for many, many years and have been baptised, or you might be a new Christian and are being baptised, but this is only the beginning. And that's why the Book of Heroes helps us to look at real human beings who lived, they were just like us, and the lessons we can learn from them. And we're going to think today, principally, about one of the hardest places to be a Christian. Okay? Now then, a few Christmases ago, and my uh, daughter Ruth never buys anything new. Oh, I'll get that off eBay from Amazon. It'll be second hand. You don't mind, do you, Dad? This fantastic book by Alexander White, a Scottish writer from hundreds of years ago. Bible characters from the Old and New Testaments. If you like reading Christian books, this is brilliant. He's got a very quirky style. But I want to read this as a backcloth to what Gideon had to do to prove he was a hero in the sight of his family, in the sight of his friends, and in the sight of God. Now, it takes a few minutes. But Christians should be used to listening for a few minutes to good biblical testimony. No sooner had the angel of the Lord taken his departure from Gideon that he threw down his staff and went into the house where his mother sat mourning day and night for the loss of her son slain at Tabor, each one resembling the son of a king. And Gideon said to his weeping mother, Awake, my mother, and sing to me the song of Deborah. And while she only the more sat and wept, her son took out and wetted his sword and sharpened his axe. Sing to me, he said, how Deborah and Barak arose and delivered Israel. Sing to me, ye daughters of Josh, of how the stars in their courses fought against Sisera. Night fell, and at midnight, behold, ten men, and each man with a pitcher and a lamp in his left hand, and with his axe in his right hand, stole out of his house and met Gideon. Their meeting was beside the altar of Baal, and in the grove of Baal, which was built and planted in Joash's high place, Joash being Gideon's father. For how could Joash's son think to cast out a single Midianite as long as that unclean altar and those unclean trees stood beside his father's house? He could not. But at every blow of Gideon's swift axe, new strength came into his arm. 
At every tree that fell before his axe, his courage rose, and the light of God's countenance returned already to Israel in every star that shone down from the opening spaces in the grove of Baal. Why is your life in such bondage and fear and famine? Why have you not been fed today and every day with the finest of the wheat? Why are you not satisfied every day with honey out of the rock? Arise in this thy might, and the Lord will make of thee also a mighty man of valour. Be sure of this, that the sure way to deliverance and peace and plenty lies through the level grove and over that prostrate altar. He quotes a hymn. The dearest idol I have known, whatever that idol be, help me to tear it from thy throne and worship only thee. Now the reading goes on. I read it at length because I've been taking the Bible studies over at uh, Bethany uh, down the road in Lee. But the principle is this. Before Gideon ever went out as a mighty man of valour, he had to prove himself at home. A question for all of us. Where would you say the easiest and the hardest places are to be a Christian? Would you say you go to school and university and you're the only Christian in your class or in your semester? Would you say you work in an office and nobody else ever goes to church and religion is never ever debated unless it's in the headlines and then it's given a negative vibe? Would you say that it's in the community where you try your best to be a good neighbour and yet there are certain things that you will not do and certain places you will not go because you know it would dishonour God's name? And so if you have something happening on a Sunday, you say, sorry, my priorities are different. I've got no problem on a Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday or Saturday, but Sunday is God's day. It's a Sabbath day and we're reminded to keep it holy. Well, yes, it can be difficult to be a Christian in the office, to be a Christian in the community, to be a Christian at school, but I would say... One of the hardest places to be a Christian is at home. Because people at work only see you for, your, for a few hours every day. People in community only see your good side. It's very, very easy to be a Christian in an evangelical church and pull the wool over everybody's eyes because we really don't need no one another. You don't see me in the week. I don't see you in the week. I only see you a few times a year. You've got to know me a little bit, and I've got to know you a little bit, but you don't know the real me, but my wife does, because we've been married for 40 years. And I know a lot more about my wife than when we were first fell in love, and it's Valentine's Day on Thursday, etc, etc. Et Wednesday. But, Wednesday. Are you listening? Well done, Wednesday. But do you see where I'm coming from? Being a Christian can be easy in church. Being a Christian can be easy at work sometimes. It all depends where you work. And at school, perhaps, where you've got some Christian friends. And in the community, where you're a member of a good evangelical church. But being a Christian at home, and this is something that Gideon had to learn. Now, hopefully, when the boys and girls are told about Gideon because of the bribe of some chocolates earlier on, Mum and Dad might say, oh yes, Gideon had a wonderful name. God called him a mighty man of valour, which he was. Oh, Gideon did a very brave thing. He tested God not once but twice with a fleece. Oh, Gideon was a very brave man. He had 300 men and he slowed the armies of the Midianites, a great enemy. But before he did any of that, Gideon had to prove himself at home. Now let's go to our uh, reading from Luke chapter 4, isn't it? 14, sorry. Just read what the Lord Jesus Christ says about our relationship with him and with our family. Luke 14, verse 25. Now great multitudes went with him, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. 
And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. That's a challenge, especially when people are being baptised. We're making a profession of faith that we're going to follow the Lord Jesus Christ and be his disciple. And yes, our lives have fallen in very pleasant places and it's easy in a sense to be a Christian. And there might be people who are coming to the baptism and they say, oh, it's a wonderful thing that you're doing. I really admire you for doing that because you think it's just a mere ceremony and you don't realise how serious it is. Now, the Lord Jesus Christ was using an exaggeration there to stress to us why Gideon had to learn there are more important things in life than obeying your family. Sometimes it's as though you hate your family because you go against the grain. But be encouraged that God always honours those who honour him. And so it proved in the life of of Gideon. So Gideon made the stand and I think we can learn a number of important things from the story of Gideon. The first thing is this, God and Baal could not coexist. The dearest idol I have known and we have to learn as we've prayed in the Lord's prayer, thy will be done. Thy kingdom come. Because the book of Hebrews tells us we are to look up to those heroes of the faith, but we're not to idolise them. They're not to be like the saints in the Roman Catholic Church where we pray to this one and that one. We are to look up to the author and the finisher of our faith, Amen. the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He is the hero of the faith. Amen. He set out on the race that was set before him and he finished it. He delighted to do God's will day after day after day after day. We were set a challenge at Christmas. I don't know how many people set it up, but <coughs> Billy said to everyone at our carol service, I want to set you a challenge for 2024. I want you to start reading the Gospels. And then I want you to go into the New Testament. We didn't say this, but I'm going to. I have not read the Bible from cover to cover. Now that might shock you. But I wonder how many people here have read the Bible from cover to cover. You might well have done. Well done if you have. But you can get bogged down in Leviticus and Deuteronomy. And we've preached our way through it. I've read it in that way. But sitting down and reading it, I'm determined to do it in 2024. I tell you what, the more you read the Gospels, the more you admire the Lord Jesus Christ. He was unique. He was a one-off. He was an amazing man. He was so wise and so loving and so patient, so stern and so severe with his enemies. He was a hero. So that's our first point. That God and Baal, God and idols, God and anything else <coughs> cannot coexist in the life of a Christian. Okay? Point number two. Gideon's obedience <coughs> was key in being useful for God. The Lord Jesus Christ makes it very, very plain. If you're going to be my disciple, you follow me and you follow me alone. It's as if, and we're not to hate our family. The Lord Jesus Christ tells us that we're even to love our enemies. But we are to honour and obey our parents as far as they do not contravene the law of God. And yet it comes to Gideon to stand up against his father, and his father's friends, and the whole community, and to make a stand, and to chop down Baal and the grove of trees. You see, this was half the problem. Well, all of the problem. God's children had forgotten all about God. And so to remind them, God sends the Midianites. And we find Gideon hiding away, threshing for... And then God intervenes, and praise God, he does intervene. <coughs> you might have heard of John Palmer, he used to be the, uh, the pastor at Bethany in Lee. 
And he, uh, he and I write a thought every week, so we alternate. So a couple of weeks ago, John gave some quotes about current issues in life. Uh, or we thought they were, but they were from the 1600s and 1700s, and things haven't changed in the past 400 years. And then he said it was precisely at that time that God raised up Wesley and Whitfield. God raised up Spurgeon. We must never, ever give up hope that God is not going to raise up men and women who will make a stand. We feel weak. We feel so ineffectual in a society which is absolutely um, bombarded by different aspects of sin. And yet God is still in control. He is on the throne. He will look after his own. And God said, in effect, enough is enough. The Midianites are making fun of me. I'm going to vindicate my name. I'm going to raise someone up. And he's going to be shown to be faithful to me in his own home. Is that the case for you? If you live in a Christian home, you might say, I never have any problems. Life is brilliant. Well, I'm very, very pleased for you. But I did not live in a Christian home. I lived in a normally Christian home, and they're even worse. <coughs> because there's an outward show, but no inward reality. And that's hypocrisy, isn't it? We don't want to be hypocrites. But when we're at home, people see us, the good, the bad, and the ugly. When we have our good days and our bad days. But the general tenor of our life should be those people who love and serve God. So point number one, where is it easy to be a Christian? Where is it hard to be a Christian? Point number two, God and idols cannot coexist. Point number three, Gideon's obedience was key to his usefulness. And point number four, once we're faithful, God will use us. And only God knows, and I say that reverentially, only God knows how he's going to use us. And it's absolutely amazing to see how God uses people who have been faithful to him in the small things, at home, saying grace, Keeping the Lord's Day, not watching certain programs on television, being careful how they use their laptop, being a kind father, being a forgiving husband, all these things that commend the gospel. <laughs> now, we were very, very fortunate. Three daughters, all converted, all baptised, one married while at university. Oh, that will never last, will it? Well, that was 15 years ago. One who's currently celebrating a, a significant birthday there on holiday, and one who were the one Ruth, the second hand queen, and she's over, but she's the one who got married in the university. Sorry, and one who works for Christian Concern for Our Nation, the Christian Legal Centre. So they're doing the Lord's work if you can. Finally, and we've mentioned it before, and with this we'll finish, especially on the subject of baptism. God honours those who honour him. May we learn to honour God, not just in church, not just in the office, not just at school, but in our homes. We might not be popular all of the time, we might take derision, we might have hardship, but God honours those who honour him. Now you might not do this here, but at Orton Park, Reuben will give his testimony. May those testimonies, if they are given here this morning and this afternoon, be honouring to God. And remember, God sees us differently very often than we see ourselves. Now next week, God willing, we're going to look at the story of Samson and the lessons of self-control. And one important aspect that Samson, we never ever remember, that for 20 years, he judged Israel. 20 years. So let's not put the downer on Samson for his lack of self-control, because for 20 years he was used by God in an amazing way. Let's all pray. Lord, thank you for this worship service. Thank you for the hymns that we've been singing, which have exalted your name and the name of your son. Thank you for the baptistry is open. 
And we do pray, Lord, that those who will be baptized will be blessed as they go through the waters of baptism because they're following your command. And thank you for the blessings of Christian fellowship. Be with us today, Lord. Take us to our homes in safety. Help us to live rejoicing in our homes as well as in the community, knowing and understanding that you are with us always, even unto the ends of the earth. Amen. 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 So our final... Thanks for watching all. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, consider subscribing so that you'll be notified when we add new videos. Thank you. God bless. Take care. Bye.